Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. This video shows you how to remove the rear glass. Ours is not broken. If yours has been broken, clean up all the broken glass, and then follow the steps for installing it. Working on the rear passenger door, I'm gonna remove it. You can use these plastic trim tools. You can get these from 1AAuto.com. I'm gonna pry out this plastic piece that's behind here. Pop the trim tool in here. I'm just gonna hold open the door handle. It pops it right out. Put that aside. You remove the screw with a Phillips head screwdriver. Use our plastic trim tool again. Slide it under here, pop this handle cover off. Just kind of work it underneath. Put that aside. There's two screws, Phillips head. Remove those. That screw stay, stays in there, that's fine. We'll grab it after we pop the door off. With the three screws removed, you can pop the door off the clips. There's a bit of a lip here, just on the inside of the door. I'm just gonna pull behind it. And I can reach underneath. Just sort of reach around the edge of the door. And we're gonna pick the door panel up and up for the door. There's the screw that fell out. Pull the, pull the door handle and lock mechanism out. Just pops it out. And I'll sit there and unplug the harness, window switch, push in on the lock. Door panel aside. So these uh, push clips, they're not damaged, they just popped out. One's stuck in the door. I'll use a trim tool to pop that one out. And this one went uh, down here, came out. So I'm just gonna put it back in. It just slides back into place. It can be reused. I just gotta get that one out of the door. I'm gonna disconnect the handle, it opens the door. It also has the door lock on here. Just gonna push the cable up and out. And slide that little lead weight. Pop it right out. Same for the other one. Take note that the white was on the top, the green was on the bottom, so when you go to put it back together, you don't reverse them. We need to pull this vapor barrier off the door. It's got butyl tape around it that's sealing it. It can be reused. This is where you're gonna wanna wear gloves because this stuff is very, very sticky and uh, it kind of gets everywhere. But you basically just carefully peel this back. You can have a razor blade with you and you can just kind of cut it. It helps on a warmer day to do this. If it peels off, don't worry about it because this stuff is incredibly sticky and we should be able to reuse this piece without much issue. So I'm just gonna carefully cut that. Try not to stretch the pink plastic too much as you're moving along. So this harness is kind of in this opening here. I'm gonna feed the harness back through and I'm just gonna keep peeling it. And I feed these wires out. Or, uh, actually, these are the cables. They kind of sit there. I'm gonna put this aside, obviously sticky side up, so that we can reuse it. To remove this window switch, I'm gonna take a plastic prying tool and pry out and try to feed this up. Pops right out of place. Got the ignition turned on in the car. I'm gonna plug in the window switch that I pulled out of the door panel. Now be careful that you don't have your hand in here or anything. When you put this down, you could pinch your fingers. So I'm gonna put the window glass all the way down. We need to slide this window glass off of this track. So this run channel is gonna to have to be removed. I'm gonna go turn the ignition off so that I can't hit the window switch by accident and pinch my fingers. I'm gonna disconnect the switch so the door window can't move anymore. 
I'm also going to unplug the window motor, which is right here. Just use a small flat bladed screwdriver to push up on the lock. And pop it out. This way the motor can't move at all because I'll have my fingers in there. I don't want them to get caught. I'm going to pull the window run channel out of here. Just kind of work it out with my fingers. Just pull it down. Put that aside. I'm going to loosen up the 10 millimeter bolt here. It's holding the top of the run channel. Loosen up the bottom one. Put those bolts aside. So this rubber just pulled out of here. At the very top, we're gonna pull back this rubber. There's a screw holding in the run channel. There's a Phillips head screwdriver to remove it. Put that screw aside. So now that these bolts are removed, I'm gonna pull some more of this uh, rubber run channel back. And I can slide the metal piece out and just kind of feed it out of the door opening. And we'll just put this aside. We'll pull the rubber run channel out and just lay it on the outside of the door. And go inside the door cavity here. This glass has to slide to the outside to slide off of this track. So support it with my hand so it doesn't fall off and also kind of lift it up. And you might have to angle it a bit so it's gonna come loose. And you're gonna very carefully pull it out of the door opening and put this aside because you don't wanna break it. So your glass has a curve to it. It's only gonna go in one way kind of matches the curvature of the door. So I'm just gonna slide it in very carefully. Don't force it. it should just slide in freely. I'm gonna reach down, guide it in with my hand. And I'm gonna down here, I want to get it back on this little pivot point. Pivot point's kind of got, it's kind of rectangled shape, so it might not fit if it's, if it's this way. Or maybe it's this, maybe it's square. All right. So it's square shape, it should fit either direction as long as you have it lined up right. I'm gonna get it in place, it's just gonna be loose. set it into the run channel over here so it's not bouncing around for now. I'm gonna wipe the grease off my fingers and install that run channel. This is our run channel. This part goes against the glass. This rubber is gonna go in it eventually, but we need to feed this into the door panel so it can sit like this. So I'm gonna just carefully work it in here. I have to like, whoop. So I did hit the glass, but I'm gonna catch it, put it back over. Hold that there with my hand. I get this flipped and turned into position. Take the run channel, I'm gonna slide it down, kind of into position. I'm gonna push it into the metal uh, run channel. Now I'm going to mess with the glass, move it around until I can get the glass settled into this channel. Bring this up and seat it up in the top of the door frame. And at the same time, I'm also trying to work the window glass into the channel. You 
kind of use both hands to maneuver it. So I've got that in place. And I'm gonna push, well, let me get this into place. Basically where I want it. I'm gonna put one of the bolts in there to just, just sort of hold it in place so it doesn't move around. I'm not gonna fully tighten it though. I just don't want it to fall out. Get the bottom one kind of caught. Put the bottom bolt in. I got everything loose. The glass is in the rubber in the channel. Push this up into place. I'm gonna have to fiddle with this rubber a little bit, make sure it fits right. Put that over into place. Get our screw in there. Feed our rubber into here. The rubber actually needs to go down more. It on the, the glass a little bit. Make sure it's seated all in here. There it is. And this side. Make sure that's pushed under there. I like where those are sitting. I can actually see the, there's actually little wear marks where the bolts were. So I'm gonna line this one back up where it was. Just tighten it down. Does it feel tight? I'll stop. I'm gonna turn the ignition on again. We'll plug our window motor in. Plug our window switch in. I'm just gonna test it, make sure it goes up and down. We got our original vapor barrier here. Still has a lot of the butyl tape left on there. If you need to get more butyl tape, uh, it's pretty easy to get, and you can just put some more on there. So, but first, I'm gonna feed the cables through. Just kind of get them through. Just kind of let it hang on the cables. Then I'm gonna feed the harness up and through. So I'm just gonna kind of line it up roughly where it was before and just push it back into place. Don't worry too much about any wrinkles. Just, just push it down and it'll seal. So in this car, the white cable went on top, the green one went on the bottom. You can kind of tell by the length of the cable which one fits better uh, because they will both fit in both spots, but you'll end up crossing them. So this will want to open the door and this will want to lock the doors, which you don't want that. You want this to open the door, you want this to lock the doors. So the white one's gonna go on the top, put that little lead weight on the end of the cable in like that, put it over, put the green one in just like that. That works the door. Now we're ready to install our door panel. I'm gonna take the window switch, get these tabs to line up with this opening here. I'm gonna push it straight in, it's gonna lock. Take our door panel, make sure all our clips are okay. Take this, it's gonna slide in like that. There's two pins on the top and the bottom that match this. It pops into place. Don't forget to plug in your window switch. Nothing like putting this together and then having to take it back off to plug it back in. There's a groove in here 
with some clips. They're gonna snap into place on here. So I'm gonna start with the door panel kinda on the high end. It might be easier with the window down, but you can do it with the window up. I'm just gonna snap it down into place. Then we're gonna go down, push all the clips in. Start with the small screw that's behind this. Put the plastic cover back in. You start by pushing that clip in first, then it'll snap in on the back ones. So just open the door handle. Snap that into place. That means to all the other two screws in the door handle. Just kind of goes straight on. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.